Hi friends and welcome back. It is so great to be back. Welcome back to the mat with me. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Happy Friday everybody. I am so excited about Friday for like fun day. I'm always excited. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys have had a wonderful week and like me, you are ready for the weekend. And how about we just have a little bit of fun? That is what Friday Frolic Fun Day is all about. Thank you guys so much for joining, as always. Um, let's do something really fun today, guys. We're going to do an actual set, a necklace. Well, not a full set. Excuse me. We're, let me rewind that. We're not going to do a full set, and we're not doing a necklace. <laughs> we're doing a set, uh, but we're going to do some earrings, friends, and we're going to do a bracelet. But to make it really fun for Friday, we're going to do a stretch bracelet which um super super simple and for all of you beginners out there if you have not yet um made a stretch bracelet then you will see it's just some simple stringing but i'll show you guys how to do my surgeons my famous surgeons knot. i have lots of uh really cool uh stretch bracelets up with how to properly tie your knots i will show you guys how to do that again here and over here, guys, we are going to actually make our own earring component out of some 22-gauge craft wire. Um, here is the earring sample that we are going to make. And it's just a really simple, cute earring, guys. Really, really beginner-friendly. Very fun and easy. Uh, so we'll use some craft wire and um, we'll put a few of these little beads, lose a little chain, and call it a day. And it should... Be just something really cute. I think it's really cute, really fun. Um, so welcome everybody. Let's talk about supplies. So I'm using some things, guys, that I got from BB Craft. Um, if you guys are interested, these are really some really great. These are hand painted. Um, uh, I think these are 10 millimeter um, beads, and they're really really pretty. I really like these. I got these from BB Craft, and they're very. They also are very Christmassy, very Christmassy type of bead. But they're really really cute. I really like them and they have a nice big hole, you know, so you can even get leather through them. We're going to do a stretch, like I said, um, and then we'll be able to tuck our knot in there so we will not have to use any glue, guys. So we're using those and then um, these really cute leaves, uh, these cute little leaf charms that I got from BB Craft and then the Moonstone in the Milky White. Uh, pick that up from BB Craft as well. So that's what we're using. I will link in the video box, guys, if you're interested in any of these things. Um, you can pop over using my 10% off code over to their store um, using those links I'll put in the box for you below. Um, and they have really great prices too. So these happen to be nugget beads as well, by the way. The rest of the things, I'm just picking up a couple things from my stash, guys. So let's do one thing at a time. Let's get organized and separate our projects, shall we? Okay, so this is one side, obviously, and this is the other. So for our earring, guys, we are going to be using um, the beads I mentioned. So we're just using two of the Moonstone, one of these little um, hand-painted beads, and then the little leaf charm in the middle. Uh, we'll just use some standard um, uh, kidney ear wires. Uh, we are going to use... Uh, what do I have here? I think this is a four millimeter jump ring I've got, guys. We need one four millimeter jump ring for our little charm. And I'm using some curb chain. You can use any kind of chain. And I cut five links. And that's what we're gonna hang our little things, our little dangles from, the five links. And then I'm using three uh, one inch head pins. And these are flat heads. You can use any uh, kind of head pins that you have. And then, of course, what we are going to need is a, a piece of 22-gauge craft wire. You can use 20-gauge um, if you've got it. You can also use 18-gauge if you've got it. Either one's going to work. And you're going to need a 2-inch piece of, sorry, I just flung it, 2-inch piece of craft wire. Okay? That's our supplies for our earrings. The other things we'll need is some of our standard tools, guys. We'll need our round nose. We'll need some chain nose. Uh, obviously, we'll need some cutters. And then we're, I'm going to use this little dolly I have. Um, now, anything round will do, guys, if you have like a lip gloss. <laughs> um, like if you have like a lip gloss, right, um, or a marker, 
Um, let me see. I've got a marker here. Okay. Like anything you have, um, I've also got like these little containers with my bead stoppers in them. Like you could use like the lid around for that. It just depends on the size you want to make your horseshoe. Anything will do. Um, even some nail polish. Um, you could use the top of the nail polish thing. We just need to use something to bend our wire around in order to shape, which is step one, our horseshoe. And so that is actually going to be step one. Let's go ahead and get into it. So this is what I've chosen. It's just a dolly that um, it's just made out of wood. Okay. And so what we're going to do, guys, is the first thing is cut two inches of craft wire. Okay. And straighten it out best you can. And we are going to make our loops. So I'm just going to do a simple loop and I am going to put the end of my wire right there in my plier. And I'm going to go ahead and just turn that loop forward until it touches the inside of my wire here. Then I'm going to go over here and do the same thing. Now, it does not matter if your loops are not going the same direction. Um, we're going to fix that in a minute. Okay. And so now this is what I have. I've got my loops turned in on both sides. Now what we're going to do, guys, is you're going to kind of try to find the center, grab whatever item you're going to wrap your um, horseshoe component around uh, or your wire to make our horseshoe. And you're going to want to kind of just find like the center the best you can. Okay. And we're just going to go ahead and wrap it around and hug it around this dolly or whatever you're using. Right. And just like that. Okay, so I've got it pretty much hugged all the way around. I'm pressing the wire in to make sure that it's shaped. And we will fix the shape, but we want to get our main shape in here first. Okay, and that's all that is, guys. Really super easy. I'm going to go ahead and slide that off of there, and we're done with my dolly. And now that's what I have. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I need, we need to make sure that our loops are facing out, okay? So all you gotta do, guys, is grab your chain nose, put it on top of your loop, we're gonna hold our wire, and we're simply gonna rotate our plier until that loop faces out. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna put my chain nose over my loop, and I'm just gonna rotate my chain nose until my loop is facing out. Okay, and now that is what I have. Okay, now what I'll do is, I will move everything else out of my way. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my other earring and you wanna try to make sure that they're, you know, as close as they can be in shape and in size. Uh, so, you know, we may need to this is just 22 gauge, so, you know, if we need to expand it or push it together, we can do that easily, okay? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it the way it just was, and I'm going to kind of lay it over this earring here and see that I think that is pretty close. I think it needs to come in just a smidge. That was not a smidge, that was a little too much. Let me pick it up and see if I can. Pretty close, guys, pretty close. Close enough. <laughs> okay, and so now we have our horseshoe component. The next thing what we're gonna do, guys, is we're gonna go ahead and make our little bottom components and construct the earring. Super, super easy, guys. So I'm gonna grab a hot pan and I am going to go ahead and feed my beads on the hot pan. 
and we'll just do simple loops, guys. So I'll just trim off a little bit of that wire. And I'll grab my round nose here, go to the edge of my wire, and I'll just roll in my loop until it touches. I'll put my round nose, if I need to straighten my loop in, I can do just that by pivoting it back just like that. Okay, and that's number one. Number two, same exact thing. And we will put our round nose right at the end of our wire. Now let's go ahead and turn that loop in until it touches the other side of the wire. Now guys, what I'm doing is I'm putting my round nose in. There's lots of ways you can do this. Um, I like to do mine after I do my loop in terms of straightening my loop. So I put my round nose in and then I'm going to just slightly turn my wrist, my round nose out a bit. And then what that does is, and then I can push my loop in. And then as you can see what that does guys is it kind of just straightens your loop out. So it looks a little bit straighter. And I'll do that same thing over here because we want to make sure that our loops are closed really well because we're going to be feeding this on that chain. And there we go. So those loops are done. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our chain, guys. And we are simply going to open the loop on either side here. And we are going to feed the chain on but we will do it um, from you know right to left or left to right. It's easier to maneuver. So when you pop your loops open, guys, um, make sure that you're putting your chain nose like this over your loops, just a little pro tip for you, instead of like this, because then it keeps the shape of your loop, okay? So I always kind of go like this when I'm opening my loop. So I'm just gonna crank it open, just like that. And now I'm gonna take the five links of chain that I have, and I'll feed that link right on that loop. And then I will just reverse that process, put my chain nose over, and close my loop, and then double check that my loop there is touching the inside of my horseshoe. You don't want your chain to fall off, so you do want to make sure that's good and close, okay? And then we're going to do the same thing over here. We'll go ahead and pop that loop open, and we're going to grab the other side of the chain and get that last link fed right on there, just like that, and reverse the process and close the loop pressing towards my finger. And making sure that loop is closed. I need to squeeze it a little bit there. Just don't want that coming off. Make sure that's on there. And, you know, again, if our horseshoe component, you know, gets out of shape, we can always, we can always fix that. Okay? So now, let me pop you right on down to the mat and show you this is what we've got. Okay? So we have our horseshoe with our chain. And it's going to want to go the other way. So we have our chain, our five links and each um, of the end of uh, each chain link end is connected right onto our horseshoe. Now what we're going to do is we are going to be connecting the um, end beads here. I think I put it right on the chain. Yeah. We are going to go ahead and connect our components right on the piece of chain that's hanging on this loop 
and this last piece of chain that's hanging on that loop. And then we will hang our little leaf right in the center loop. So I'll keep you down on the mat while I'm doing that. And so in order to do that, same thing guys, is we'll go ahead and just let's crank that loop open on our component we made. And we will feed it right there on that last link. And then we'll close up nice and snug there. And we'll repeat the same thing on the other side. And so I've got that last link of chain right there. Just pop my little uh, little dangle right on there and we'll go ahead and rock that loop back into place where he is closed. If we need to turn to the side to squeeze it a smidge, we can do that, making sure it's good and closed. And now it's what we have, okay? And now we're just going to put that little jump ring right on top of that leaf bead. And so let's go ahead and open up a four millimeter jump ring. And then we are going to go ahead and feed this jump ring right on that center loop. And that would be, or the center link, excuse me. And that would be that guy right there. That's my center. And then we'll go ahead and pop the little charm right there on the jump ring. And then we'll go ahead and close our jump ring up. And the bottom of our component is done. And in order to finish this, guys, so easy, easy breezy, relaxing on a Friday. What I did, you can really do this anyway, um, but what I did was I took and just did, you can do a wire wrap loop if you want, you can do anything you want. I just, again, used a flat head um, head pin. And I'm just going to do a simple loop again, the way we just did on our other components. I'm going to go ahead and grab my round nose. We're just going to make a simple loop. And let's get that loop straight. because we do not need to open this loop again. Once we get it nice and closed, we do not need to open it again. So you can see my loop is good and closed there, okay? And so now what we're gonna do is, let's see, this is the front. This is the front. Which way? Oh, yeah. Okay. So in order, these leaves, you can tell which side is the front and the back. So in order to fix that, because this is the back of the ear wire, all I have to do is just turn my loop on the ear wire. So then therefore that is my front. Okay. And so all we have to do now, guys, is grab our ear wire and go ahead, same thing. Try to open your ear wires with your chain nose facing up and down. Um, this way the loop stays the same shape on your ear wire. So we'll just go ahead and push it open just like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to first feed on my bead and then I'm going to feed on our horseshoe component.
and then we'll go ahead and close that loop back up. Pressing it in towards my finger, using my finger as kind of my backboard. And I'm gonna turn it to the side, squeeze it just a smidge. I want that to be nice and closed. And there we go. And again, guys, if you have a obvious front or back of your earring, um, all you have to do in order to, like you've got your components already on your earrings, any kind of earrings you're making, just a quick tip, is you can take any pair of chain nose and all you do is you would put your chain nose over the loop of the ear wire. You see that part of the loop of the ear wire right there? And then you would grab it and squeeze it with your chain nose and then simply twist your ear wire either way you need it for the front to be laying in the front. And obviously this portion is the back, okay? So a little tip for you and our little earrings are done. They're super cute. Now let's move over to a fun little bracelet. Super cute. They lay so weird on the mat, but you get the idea how cute. Super dangly. I'll pull you up a little bit. Super dangly, super adorable. I think they're just as cute as a bug's ear. So there's those. Let's go ahead and lay those right over there. And stretch uh, bracelets, guys. So stretch bracelets, if you've been with me for a while, you've seen me make uh, many. <laughs> um, and we literally only need one tool, which is some cutters or some scissors. Either one's going to work. Now, in this case, we are going to do a couple of dangles. And so I have a 24 gauge ball end hot pen so that I can wire wrap. Um, really quick note there, the reason I've chosen to do that, you can use jump rings if you want to add dangles, but it just adds for a point to rub onto um, the stretch cord and weaken it or possibly, uh, it's just abrasion and possibly break it. Um, and it won't ha you know happen over time. Um, so what I've decided to do is use a smaller um, ball end head pen and we'll feed them on and wire wrap it. Um, that's what we're doing there. And then I have one little green bead and we are going to basically put that, um, I think we're going to put that where our dangle is going to go. Okay, so that'll be our somewhat of our middle point. Now, in order to start a stretch bracelet, what I do is, and by the way, guys, I'm using one millimeter. I think it is. Yeah, it's one. Um, you can use, I usually use 0.5 or 0.6 and then we double it. But these are really large hole beads, although they're very, very light. Um, I've opted to use the one millimeter, so we don't need to double it, okay? And by the way, I also have a bunch of little bead caps here. So we'll put some bead caps on. So really, really easy and really fun. Um, so I always go like this in my thumb. I hold the end of my memory wire, and then I basically will go around my wrist. One, and then I half times, okay? When I'm not doubling it, I go around one and a half, okay? And then I'll go ahead and cut it right there. And step two, when making, did I say memory wire? I meant stretch bracelet, sorry, um, is we have to pre-stretch. We have to pre-stretch. It's the, one of the most important points. Um, it's going to help your bracelets to not stretch out and break. Um, immaturely prior to their, you know, lifetime of when, you know, because bra stretch bracelets, when I make them guys with my surgeon knots, they last, I'm telling you, years before they need to be redone, like I'm talking five, six, seven years. Um, I have some that are probably seven to eight years old and still going strong. Um, and let me give you an example and a visual if you're new to my channel. 
um, so you know what I'm talking about. Let me just randomly grab some. So um, I make tons and tons of stretch bracelets. What I'm talking about uh, with, if you don't pre-stretch, uh, let's use this one since you can see the black, there's black stretch here. Um, if you do not pre-stretch, when you're wearing your bracelets, they will be like this and you will be able to see your cord through or they will um, stretch out um, larger than the size of your wrist prematurely. That's, that's the whole reason we pre-stretch. So we don't have any gaps in our beads and we don't see any cord. That's why we pre-stretch. Okay, very, very, very important. So we pre-stretch and in order to do that, you saw what I did, you just basically tug on it and run it through your fingers all the way down uh, both sides. And now I'll come back the other way. Same thing. And if you're using large hole beads like me, you do not need a needle. Um, I sometimes will use my beading needles for stretch bracelets, but not necessary on this one because we have nice big holes. So what we'll do is we just go ahead and basically feed them on. Super fun. Hence, Friday Frolic Fun Day, guys. <laughs> we'll just go ahead and feed these guys on. And every other one that I put on, I'm going to want to actually do a bead cap. I just remembered. I almost just started whipping them on there. And when I do a bead cap, I think this will go through. Yeah. On every other bead. That'll slow me down a little bit, but that's okay. It's Friday. No need to rush. Just chilling, relaxing with our beads. So I'm just putting these cute little bead caps. The reason is, is because it's gonna really set off um, the, uh, the cute little earrings we just made with the gold there. Pick a little of that gold up. So I just pulled some bead caps from my stash. You can use any size beads. You don't even have to use bead caps. You don't have to do a dangle. Do whatever you want. Whatever feels comfortable for you. Whatever looks good to you. There are no rules, guys. I just thought this would be a fun, kind of easy end of the week project if you will. really pretty beads. Now you can put a bead stopper on the end if you want. Um, I did not uh, because um, I pre-stretched it enough that I should have enough and my beads are not really rolling around but you can you absolutely um, a lot of times when I'm doing stretch bracelets. I actually do put a bead stopper on, um, but I did not do it today. So let's see what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do, guys, is because I know I'm getting pretty close to the end. So what I'm going to choose to do right here is I am going to end up stopping and I am going to put my little green bead and my dangles on because I want my knot to be in 
my bead, not where these smaller bead caps are or where the small bead and dangle is. So just because I think I'm getting pretty close here, I think that, yeah, maybe one more and then we'll go ahead Stop. We'll make our little component. We'll pop it on here. And that way we have our knots on um, these large beads. So he'll be tucked away forever and you'll never see it. Okay, so now, oops, that goes that way. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I am going to put on, let me figure out how to put these cute little leaves on here. What can we do? Well, they're just gonna lay right on top of each other. Maybe we'll just use one. So I'm gonna put on my green bead here. I'll let him be there. And so I think what we'll do is let's kind of do a wire wrap situation and we'll have the ball. I just thought of an idea. So we'll have to wear like the ball is like in front of the leaf, like right there. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm going to take and bend up this eye pen, and then I'm going to cross over this ball portion. Okay, and this is the front of my leaf. And then I'm basically going to pull that way down. And then I am going to grab my pliers here, hold this wire. And let me see if I can get this wrapped around a few times. to where the ball portion lands in the front. I think, I think we can do it. So then basically, and then we can kinda, that's the front of my leaf, so then we can kinda tuck that down like that. And then you can see the little ball portion is kinda hanging right there on my leaf. And now we'll just grab our uh, round nose. We'll just do a quick little simple loop. So just put my round nose right there. We don't need a big loop either. And so we'll just do a right bend. And then we'll just go ahead and wrap that around. a little simple wire wrap loop. And we'll trim the excess of that off and tuck all that in. And see what we got going on there. Make sure everything is tucked in. Just kind of work hard that loop a little bit and then I'm gonna go along with my fingers I want to make sure that there's nothing poking out I can feel that right there let me fix that so you don't want anything poking you perfect and so that's what I have. And then as you can see, the little ball portion of the head pump sitting right there on top of the leaf.
super cute. And so now I will just feed this directly on and we shall just continue. And so then we have a regular bead and then we need a bead cap. I think that's two bead caps. It actually is. They're like stuck together. to check for size. So what I'm going to do is I am going to put my finger right here near both ends and then go ahead and put it over my wrist. And what you're going to want is your beads to touch. Now mine are with, you know, wherever you want them. And usually it's right below the wrist bone, right? Um, so they're not sloppy. And by the time I tighten that up, I think, I think it sh we need one more bead. So if I'm not pulling on it at all, um, I have a little bit of space there, as you can see. So I'm gonna go with a one more bead. Which I do not have in front of me, let me grab one. And so what we do, guys, is marry up your ends here, okay? And I'll show you how to do my surgeon's knot if you're new to my channel. Uh, I'll give you my little pro tips here. Um, and so what we do is we see that by not pulling it, just letting it lay, that my beads are just about touching, just about, okay? But by the time we tighten this up, this should be perfect, okay? So what we do is, I'm thinking I'm gonna pull you down to the mat just in case you're a beginner and you've never seen me do a surgeon's knot before so I can show you right up close what I'm doing. So you're basically going to take and just do a regular overhand knot, okay? And we're gonna go airborne, let gravity get involved here, okay? And then we're gonna pull it, but we're not gonna pull it very tight, okay? We are gonna go under, pull this side this way, this one, oops. Overhand knot, pull it. Now we are going to crisscross. So we're gonna put this side this direction, Why are you doing that? Okay. So what we're gonna do is we are going to crisscross underneath and pull them back to the top. And now we're gonna start to pull a little bit more. Okay, and now we're gonna go with our five knot roll, right? So you're gonna do an overhand knot. There's one knot right there. And then you are gonna take the other side and go over and around under 
just like that. And there is your surgeon's knot, triple knot. And then we're gonna lift it off the mat so we can let gravity get involved. And we wanna stay right in that section. And we're gonna go ahead and start to pull it snug now. So every time we're pulling and doing a knot now, we're gonna pull it a little bit tighter. We're gonna do the same thing, crisscross. So this one goes this way, this side goes underneath the bracelet and comes over this way or back to the top. We're gonna do a regular overhand knot on this side and then over here we'll take this one and go this direction and there you go there is your triple knot right there and then we're gonna go ahead and pull do that nice and snug and then we do it one more time we crisscross them underneath making sure again that we're always staying in the same space okay so we're just staying in the same space and so we do an overhand knot here and then we take the other tail and we put it behind that loop Pull it to the back and pull it to the back. <laughs> pull that tail there and then there you see is your triple knot. And we always pull it off the mat to let gravity get involved so that it'll lay in its you know, natural way you know your knots are good. And then our fifth knot, same thing. We crisscross underneath, bring them back to the top. I'll pull you up. And so we did a regular overhand knot. And then I took the tail on this side and went over and under the loop. So now I have both my tails right here. And there is my surgeon's knot, my triple knot. And I'll pull it. And now I'm gonna go ahead and pull it really good. Really nice and snug. That is not going anywhere. Ooh, it requires no glue. My surgeon's knot, five knot rule. And there it is. Now you will take, guys, and you can see how massive that knot is. That's okay. Now make sure when you're cutting, you're only you're gonna want to cut it like around, you know, a centimeter, you know, less than an eighth of an inch away. Don't cut it too close to your knot, and then we'll force the knot and push it in the bead, or it'll work its way there on its own. So you're gonna want to go ahead and pull your tails like I'm doing here, and then I'm gonna snip that there. And then I'm gonna snip this one right there. And there's our huge knot. And then we can simply force it in the bead just like that. It's gone forever or we could, it, it would have automatically worked its way. Also, PS, um, as you're wearing your bracelet. Let me fix that. And that's what we have. Cute little, cute little bracelet. Cute little stretch bracelet. I think it's so precious. This is so Christmassy too. I just really like it. Looks so adorable. I'll probably have to mess with that a little bit more just to make it lay down straight. But it, but it will. It's just a 24 gauge head pen. So it just needs me to kind of maneuver them a little bit. And so I'll probably just do that. It'll be just fine with my cute little dangle right there and our set of earrings. And voila, we made a set, a stretch bracelet and a cute little pair of earrings with our little horseshoe situation. Super festive and cute. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Happy Friday, one and all. 
to my extended YouTube family. I wish you guys a blessed, amazing weekend as always. And until next video, be blessed.